Welcome back. I'm finally back. It's been a. Uh, it's actually even though obviously I've been uploading videos, it's been a week since I've been recording. Um, I've been away uh, for a bit, and now I'm back. I had quite a few planned streams. If anyone knows on my Twitter, if anyone follows that, but I just I didn't end up following through because I've been like actually crammed with stuff for the past couple of weeks. Not well, leading past couple of weeks, which are now leading into my uh, coming weeks. So I'll be starting a. I'm starting a course this week. Which runs for I think seven or eight weeks. So I am going to try and continue streaming twice a week. I will get yeah, probably be Tuesday and Thursday. This week it's not because obviously, if anyone has noticed, it's the uh, the Queen's passed away. Uh, so obviously bank holiday. Of course, meant to start today, but of course back tomorrow. So that's kind of why I'm in this debacle at the moment. But I will be uploading videos. I am recording videos like this video off stream because if anyone noticed but twitch isn't really popping off my youtube is but i think that'd be something that i'll probably cover on stream and upload it especially kind of the jordan peterson videos but today we've got i'm doing some well in this video in particular i'm going to be doing a debate review in particular looking at the debate between lance from the surfs and uh, loan the box so the two creators i respect massively um I respect their opinions, especially kind of what their mind, uh, their uh, ideologies. So I thought it'd be quite interesting because they're debating the Queen. Um, I'll probably get into my stance on the Queen uh, a later bit. It's mostly kind of comes down to a lot of people I've spoken to about the kind of like, well, obviously these the cloning processes were happening under um, Britain, obviously like examples the concentration camps in Kenya, and everyone's like, well, she wasn't the one um, doing it. She was the one kind of the figurehead of it all. But it's like, at the same time, as being the figurehead and of being the monarch, obviously, it's a constitutional monarch. She's not, like, the authoritarian power. She's still... Uh, she's not, like, the one leading the charge, as, as the phrase goes. But she was aware of it. Like, if she wasn't aware of it, it would be mind-boggling, to be honest. Especially not when what we know in retrospect. So that's what kind of going into this video is now. So I'm going to bring it up. So yeah, so we've got the two. So debate. I want to kind of see what the kind of perspectives are. Because um, Lone the Box definitely has, um, shares the stance where it's... There's no really point shitting on the Queen. Especially from like a leftist perspective. Because obviously everyone that I write from like Ireland and outside of the UK. Um, the UK so I'm talking about uh, the... Republic of Ireland. Uh, fair enough, like right, saying the Queen's a bad thing, the Queen was atrocities, fair enough. But from a UK's perspective, constantly kind of like shitting on the Queen, um, it's unlikely to get people on your side. Whereas there's, even though you talk to people, a lot of people want to get rid of the monarchy, a lot of people are still very uh, nostalgic about it. And to pull people on your side, you can't really just like, obviously, like, obviously just like tell how awful she was. Other royal member families, fair enough. I think Andrew and everything he's done is kind of fair game. Uh, Charles, also fair game, I would say. Uh, but so it's been quite an interesting thing. Uh, obviously, a lot of the uh, US uh, YouTubers and politics streamers have been covering it. So yeah, it's been uh, interesting times at the moment. So that ado, I thought I'd kick it off. Let's get into it then. And uh, if people want to say, you know, it's a good thing that that person no longer exists because of it. all the bad things they were doing. So yeah, I am two leftist perspective of the Queen. I think it's going to be interesting. Um, give me one sec. I'm about to speak to Lonerbox. We're going to have like a mini Queen debate. All right, so uh, I hear that you want to tell me about why uh, the Queen is Poggies. That's what my chat is saying. Is that... Yeah, well, first of all, we can only address her by her actual title for the remainder of this debate. So Which if we is. are really going to talk about Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom, of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, <laughs> and of her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, <laughs> Defender of the Good Faith. I am part of said Commonwealth, so she is my Queen as the well, as, as she is head yours. Of your She's the head yes. of your Commonwealth, yeah, okay. Yep, she absolutely is. Yeah. Our Governor okay, General so. answers. I think a lot of people forget this as well, the amount of territory that the Queen governs. There's like, well, we've got Australia, obviously, you've got Canada, but fortunately, in the past like um, few years, more countries have been leaving. Like Jamaica recently, I think it's either 
this year or last year announced they're uh, separating from the royal family which is actually quite it's quite humbling really um and also they're asking for reparations as well which they definitely should to well I, now she answers to the king but uh, she did previously answer to the queen yeah so i'm in this like weird and i think it's probably an impossible thing to hold but i think it makes sense okay is to uh think that the celebrations are really fucking weird and are just like a massive optical l and it's i don't even know what you're celebrating sort of it's well i think one reason why people are celebrating it maybe go into a bit is a lot of people, myself included, think that Charles will be a much weaker monarch. Well, if well, if the uh, the Charles does go right, <laughs> they, they might be. I think that's probably part of the meme as well. Is that well? Who knows about the uh, history of England? First Charles got beheaded. Second Charles got overthrown with the Orange Revolution. So there is quite a few things. Um. So I think that's that's partly it. But also I think. Since Elizabeth reigns so long, anyone who's going to come afterwards isn't going to be able to hold kind of like a candle to her in that sense, that kind of like nostalgic sense. So I think there's an understanding that the monarchy is now weakened and then now there is a stronger chance for a republic to form. However, there's a lot of issues with that as well. Um, it probably won't be two or a few years. Uh, I know that Australia have announced they won't do a referendum on whether they should keep a monarchy for a couple of years out of respect. And also, as a British person, I would not want to become a republic, a republic under the Tories because that would be absolutely devastating. And yeah, it'd be a bit archaic, really. So, so yeah. The monarchy still exists. Colonialism mm -hmm. still exists. Reparations mm -hmm. haven't been paid. The funeral is going to cost a fuck ton in the middle of an energy crisis. Yeah, I, the amount of money being put in, into the funeral because recording this funeral happened today. Um, yeah, that money is extortionate. Considering the amount of issues we've still got again, energy crisis. This choice hasn't really fixed anything in that, so we are a bit screwed. The response uh, definitely could be fixed because now it's, they're just closing everything and calling off all kinds of shit, including parliamentary procedures, which is insane during an energy crisis. Um, yeah, that's fucked. But I also so which also under this uh, kind of the mask of the grieving periods where we've been forced to grieve. Joke. Uh, this trust has approved fracking. Because it went really well last time we did that. If I wanted to look at our fracking record, look at what happened in Cornwall. Didn't go so well. So I don't know what there is to celebrate, and I think celebrating just makes you look like makes people look like absolute like lunatics to anyone who uh, isn't already on board. But I also just kind of want to meme about it. Like, Somewhat agree. So, so for you, it's, it's just it's a. <laughs> So for you, it's just a massive optical disaster that you think will turn more people away from either leftists I've, or... Optically, it isn't great. Think about the amount of crap that um, Jeremy Corbyn got when he wasn't singing, like, God Save, uh, Save the Queen. It's that amount of backlash and that kind of... If anyone knows what happened in the second general election of Jeremy Corbyn, obviously, other reasons, other factors, Brexit didn't pan out very well. Anti-colonial projects or anti-imperialist projects or anti-monarchy. Uh, Projects. I think it's cocked as well. I think it's incredibly cocked. Like, um, the whole point of the... I would disagree with that. ...queen is that, like, well, aside from being, like, a sort of pro-colonial propagandist, and then, you know, from then on, it's just, like, a pro-British shittery propagandist. Mm -hmm. um, like, the whole point of her was, especially after the fall of the empires, just to kind of remain there as a kind of sense of, like, nostalgia and of, like, uh, British dominance and British exceptionalism, even though... Yeah, like reminder of the old, like the old times, the old way, the old establishment, as it were. But there is issues with this. So all that's gone. We're not a big empire anymore. People don't really give a fuck about us. So she's there to kind of like act as this kind of sim. But I think for a lot of people, a lot of people speaking out at the moment, is that the things that have happened have affected people. I know Line the Box wouldn't disagree with this or anything. Um, so because a lot of those kind of like celebrating it are those people where the atrocities happen may not happen to them but may happen to their families or their country so in that sense it is somewhat understandable like it's the death of a very significant figure who presided over a country that had decimated their country like again committed colonial atrocities symbol for right wingers to cope about basically but it seems weird that she's this she is playing this role of this symbol and people who oppose her from the left are like 
attacking the symbol and they're like really happy that the symbol is going to get replaced with a symbol with a different face you know it's like it's like it's like people just punch but it's, it's i again i hold the the sense where it's gonna it's gonna be a weaker symbol at a hologram you know so I, I got two questions for you, just so I could kind of get my bearings here. The first would be, and I in no way compare these two people and what they've done. I think uh, the person I'm about to mention is far, far worse. But I'm just curious, Henry Kissinger no longer holds any real executive power. If he were to pass and people celebrated, would you feel the same way, um, considering the stuff that he's done in his past? And again, the Queen Elizabeth did nothing anywhere near close as bad as he did. I'm just curious. So I have no sympathy for either of them. That's... That is a weird comparison. I think all this is different with like, her and Kissinger and kind of Elizabeth. Obviously, not as negative as in person involved, but at the same time, I don't, I'm not a fan of the royal family just because the amount of taxpayer money that goes into them, like our money and the stuff they've tried to do. Like, they've tried to, like, we've, like, paid out of our taxes to, like, decorate the uh, the grandkids' like, university. Like, Eugene, I think it was Eugene, Eugenie's, like, university room got refurbished with taxpayer money they tried to luckily they didn't succeed i think they did at another point try to heat buckingham palace with our poor for refund money stuff like that is abhorrent and obviously served no real purpose other than like morale which again like not not many people are uh or obviously a million people went to go to see the queen um like in a in a casket which is quite significant, but then you've got like another 70 million people who didn't, so. I'm really like, I'm not really crying about the Queen going and all that, but yeah, like Kissinger, uh, it's, yeah, I think it's very different. Kissinger was an active, like he was his own mm -hmm. agent. He had his own opinions. He spoke like uh, unilaterally. He, you know, actually gave like his own speeches about like, even after Chile, he was like, yeah, fuck it. We're not letting these people go communist. Fuck them. Like he said, he, he, he openly said that he didn't say fuck, but you know, um, Paraphrase. yeah. Whereas the queen just spends like spent her whole life kind of like being told what to do. And that's why I find it so weird that people are saying that is, uh, that is kind of true. I think, I think the main issue is that she's still new. Is it still happening? Like a lot of the constitutional monarchies in the UK, they don't really have a voice in a sense. They can't really openly display their kind of political uh, leanings, which is something I know is interesting that Charles is actually against. It's something that actually he hated being in the royal family, is that he couldn't express his uh, political voice. But then again, he's a member of the royal family. His political voice is going to be something that everyone likes, especially me and the people like in my political group. She ordered the troops to fire on people and shit. I was like, no, she, she, she gave speeches that were written by someone else. With the exception of the Christmas speech, every other speech she gave was written by someone else. Uh, she shook hands and she gallivanted a little bit, which is in its own way a problem. But um, so, so yeah. So I was yeah. just asking that because I wanted to get my bearings on what you feel about this. Because so clearly, yes, different things are different, and he's much worse. He's a bigger monster. But there are instances would you, where you wouldn't say it's a massive optical L for people to celebrate if someone suddenly passes. Not to wish death upon your enemies, because that's more not what we're talking about. But just someone uh, who they see as is either representational of something bad or had done something bad when they pass. There are times when you think that's okay. Um, even with Kissinger, like celebrating, I, I would feel less annoyed by it, but it's like the same thing, you know, if Kissinger dies of old age, comfy in his bed, what's the celebration? The guy did not, the guy got away with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, you can say the same thing about anyone who dies in their old age. I'd rather see him tried for war crimes, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but would you not see that there'd be a lot of people, say, like in Cambodia, who would have a right to, to celebrate? And I want to get away from Kissinger because I think it's going to distract us, but like, He's not in, he's not on Earth anymore. I guess it would be the thing. It'd be more, it'd be optically even better if we kind of compared like a, to like another monarch, just because I feel like Kissinger had more agency than the Queen. Then the Queen was the figurehead and more again like more leaning into the propaganda of a empire, a dying empire, but an empire nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not that yeah. he's still continuously um, being able to do damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People from Cambodia, sure, you know, yeah. Like if you're, <laughs> that's the exception. Um, I mean, yeah, because the, the people I'm fighting with on Twitter are probably not from Cambodia or from any of the ex-British colonies or whatever the fuck. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. um, okay, so with the Queen, then my second question was going to be: Do you do you uh, agree that what the monarchy has been used for? Uh, especially for the later part of her life when she's in a constitutional monarchy, she's not nearly as effective, uh, has also been to kind of do a form of historical revisionism in that 
But this is more of an interview than a debate, but it's interesting. This is, I forget what the, the term was used on the internet, scepter washing or crown washing, as in mm -hmm. the, the, the evils of the British Empire and, and, and its imperialism. Uh, now we think of the monarchy as this kind of like, uh, she's refined, uh, she has corgis, uh, she uh, waves, that's, that's what we think of. Yeah, um, maybe. I think that's definitely more, that's projected maybe into the US. Because the US coverage of that, the royals, is insane compared to the UK. Um, but I think that's definitely what people aren't really aware in the UK. Like, if I ask my parents about, oh, like, uh, like what, what happened in the African colonies under Elizabeth, or again, like Cambodia, they wouldn't know. They wouldn't, they would be like, what? Well, we didn't know this. And I'm just like, oh, like how did you know this? And it's like, no, well, personal experience, trained, um, trained, um, trained academically in history. But at the same time, it's like, this stuff is is easy easily findable but a lot of people don't want to accept it a lot of it could people find comfort in it so it is it's such a this is such a tangled thing there's so many like positives but also negatives out of it so yeah yeah i mean i think if she is i think she's a, a much smaller part of it than people would let off i mean uh i don't really know how much the monarchy itself helped with uh getting away with colonialism it's like every country that can do colonialism kind of does it and gets away with it for all different reasons and all the different justifications um like i don't really know like operation legacy which was this entire uh oh, that was, was like, going to bring that up next yeah so. yeah from the british colonial office it was just to yeah just to destroy as much evidence as possible basically uh <laughs> yeah. through the 50s and 70s i don't really know how much the queen had to do with that that's the thing it's like well whether or not um, she's directly responsible she's the representation of all this she's literally the queen it's it's but then her uh, agency would have been limited in this this is kind of like the issue where it's like like, she probably knew about it, but she wasn't the one giving the orders. Like, she's kind of limited in that way. Like, I I feel it's more, it needs to be more on the people that um, obviously committed these things. Like, saying more about, like, say, like Thatcher, for example, or, like, a, 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 and Churchill, less so than the actual, like, Queen. So, it is, that's kind of, like, the issue that Lonely Box is kind of bringing them up, and they kind of agree with him on that point it's like whether or not you think she's a bad person for engaging this or being a part of it or just being a, like a spectator to everything around her that's still what she represents yeah yeah it's what she represents yeah and i i just don't think like that is worthy of like celebrating someone's death it's worthy of all other things it's worthy of like the, i think the memes are probably fine i think it's worthy of um not mourning her definitely not thinking she was a great like loss yeah like, i agree with 100 percent uh, thinking they're but it just makes me wonder, like, what was, is there like this alternative universe where the queen like steps up and does the right thing? Because I feel like if that happened at any point in the 50s or 60s towards the end of the empire, like, she probably would have just been called schizophrenic and put into a, and then switched over for a different monarch. Like that, it's happened before when monarchs haven't really towed the line. Yeah, Philip's, Philip's uh, mom definitely got put into asylum, essentially. Um, can't, so... That is an interesting point. I don't, uh, it's the coming of an empire. It's, it. it's what it's would have it eaten its own or to save itself. I think that's kind of the question he's posing here. So um, that, that yeah, kind of feels like the just think... following orders argument, though. I mean, like ultimately, I uh, I, I think okay. you can you can certainly make an argument for she never spoke up about. It's yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's not following orders in terms of she wasn't the one killing people, but she was the one like you all looked at while people were being killed the atrocities that were occurring right like that's like you're, you're right she probably would have been uh either condemned for it i don't know even even kicked out but like to to sit back but then the question is if this is what you think would have happened possibly it's kind of like a double-edged sword way like she probably kicked out but she should have done it and it's like i agree she should have done it or she had done it but it's kind of also you gotta think about like as streamers this is and kind of like people that like, like to delve into history and like philosophy it's a mindset of a royal is probably almost alien to us like we probably wouldn't have this kind of like her my mindset and her mindset and these guys mindset it's completely different different realm of existence almost where everything she thinks about is just it probably wouldn't even cross her mind while they happen when you are again the representation of the crown the monarchy the empire britain um 
Like I, I, I would falter for that immensely. Or yeah, or even like again, just following orders is like we're taking you know, people who just following orders is for people who actually like killed people in camps and shit. Like that's that's where that comes from. So for her, yeah. just like I guess like shaking hands and doing speeches and shit again, like speeches that aren't written for her. Yeah. Um. So I don't. Yeah. Like I'm not really fighting on any ground of like moral justification for her. Like I don't really. Um. I don't even know. Like, is it even? I don't even know how much she knew. Like. I don't imagine if she was going to Kenya that she. Prob that's the thing. I think it's probably going to come out maybe in the next few years how much she actually knew. Because a lot of the uh, raw family correspondence are obviously very hush hush. Was seeing, um, like like uh, land clearances, or you know, she wasn't there when the camps happened, and even when they did happen uh, during the Mamo uprising, like. It took like seven or eight years before even like most politicians knew about it, let alone the Queen. I'm just wondering if like. I mean, this this is always just going to be are, like, this is always like, going to be speculation. Politicians. But I I yeah. personally think it would be kind of ridiculous if she wasn't aware of what was taking place as the Queen. I don't know. Maybe. You, oh no, I agree with Lance on this one. She was definitely been aware. You, you might know more about how the the inner circle works than I do. It'd been I think it'd been treason if she, if she technically wasn't informed about it. Yes, I'm, I'm speaking I, I from a place like, of pure speculation here. Yeah, because like the Queen Mother is a very different story. The Queen's mother was insane, mm -hmm. and she would actually go around uh, all the colonies and like just like celebrate all the brutal shit that was happening. And she would be very. She was quoted like a million times giving her opinions on Jews and black people and bloodlines and all that. Yeah, they weren't that. Uh... Well, some of them did marry Nazis, so yeah, there is that. She was a proper like fucking Cersei Lannister and shit, but maybe with this one, it might be the case that you know a bunch of shit is going to come out after she's dead because that did happen with the Queen Mother. But um, again, it's like it's the same thing. Like, yeah, she was. Yeah, the royals were fucked. Like, we have we have like politicians who will um, push policies and then show themselves to be completely ignorant of what those policies even were, right? Like this trust. Right? Like <laughs> David Cameron would once like he would complain to his own constituency about poor public services and they had to write back saying well yeah you cut them he, like he didn't know another interesting thing when david cameron cut um basically got rid of the youth service in the uk which also led to the uh, increase in uh youth crime um actually made his mom jobless because she was also a youth worker so there's that he didn't actually stop to think whether or not the public services he had cut were underperforming because he had cut them so if you can be that like that level of like blissful unawareness, like you have like, the average British person doesn't know about Kenya or Yemen or like what happened there. Um, For sure, but this is and it says it should be something educated in person. Like this is like when it's happening, I I I could you know start to believe you perhaps at the moment, but generations later, I mean her tenure was so long that you can't tell me like 30, 40 years she didn't know about either that or some of the worst things that uh you know people that she was the queen like Churchill, the fucking you know the, the handful of really fucked up shit that he did. You know can you not give a speech at a certain point, condemn it? talk out about it i mean one of the big things that indigenous communities here are really upset about is the residential school programs um that she never apologized for never uh, spoke out about uh no no yeah, i agree with this it's obviously so much like progressive progressive it's a it's a weird time at the moment stuff that's come out especially in like education kind of we have to teach atrocities in our schools like we have to teach the save trade it's part of the national curriculum kind of when that kind of got all introduced, maybe some like, oh, no, we did all these horrible things. And the best way in order to progress society so we never do this again is by learning about them. Something like that would have been quite beneficial. Uh, and that information at this point was more than public, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, um, so at the time, maybe she didn't fully understand what was taking place. She was just like, oh, I'm just uh, the cheerleader for the Empire. Um, but years later, I don't think you can make that argument at all. Well, but why not? Because people at the time everyone like all these people in the empire like apart from the ones i guess who probably saw the atrocities or the mps who spoke about it, and you know all these people spent a really long time thinking that they were just doing like i don't know just doing simple like just doing the right thing or whatever like i don't know how where, like, where exactly the queen sat with that but um again like i don't i don't really care either way if she was ignorant then that's again maybe a problem like how stupid would you have to be to go there and just think like oh wow these people are you know like this is our land for some reason. I wonder how that happened. You know, like yeah, yeah. It's just it's just what we like what we were expecting of her was like what to give out this big to give to use her platform to give like one big speech where she becomes the first monarch in like three hundred years to uh to like veto legislation or to go against what she was given to say, uh only to. Also, obviously, on side note, but under David Cameron's government, the actual um the monarchy has basically been stripped of a lot of its power. Like before that, say like. For the 21st century the monarchy actually had the power to dissolve parliament because all the kind of thing where obviously 
the government wasn't doing as it should, it should be kicked out. But the Tories made sure you can't do that anymore, so you kind of strip the power. I can't remember, there's a TV programme where Charles comes in, like he does, I think it's a TV programme, he yeah, comes in, like dissolves Parliament, but the monarchy doesn't have that power anymore. The monarchy actually has very, like, it has more power now than it did 20 years ago. It has, like, less power now than it did 20 years ago. So it is quite significant. And, uh, I don't know. And, and each year it kind of keeps decreasing and decreasing and decreasing but obviously the money they get from the taxpayer doesn't and again I keep I'll, I'll, I'll shout this to the rooftops every single time I get, uh, I get a chance to say it that money can be better spent elsewhere it probably cause like a constitutional crisis and just like yeah maybe she should yeah she definitely should have done that um, but, but you, don't, you don't even you can't, you can't even agree with the fact that she could have done that years later for a variety of things yeah, I'm sure she could have, yeah. Um, but I don't think it, the fact that she didn't is like... Also, it's interesting because in Lone Box, obviously, uh, they live in Scotland. Uh, and I'm pretty sure they're happy to see a Scottish independence and kind of independence from both like England, but also from their royal family. So I think if anyone's wondering, oh, he's defending the Queen. I think uh, if, uh, uh, if he was given the, the first chance he got, don't want to drop the royal family, he definitely would. I think the grounds for celebrating death is probably a bit higher than that. Um, what about uh, the Falklands and, and what she what said about, about them? So I've got that uh, thread up here, so it's... Where are we going with the Falklands? Because... It's the quote. They were invaded. The people that live in the Falklands had a referendum of voice to be British. And the whole, we found it first, and it's like, oh yeah, literally every other country in Europe, including Portugal, I, I think Portugal, definitely France, have all claimed it, but the English were the first to actually put people on it, so this is interesting. Also, there's oil in the Falklands, so that's kind of why they wanted it, not because of the people on the island, it's just, it's, it's the, uh, all the money they can make from it from the Queen in addressing the conflict with Argentina last year over the Falklands evoked the principle of self-determination that she said was the spirit in which the one-time British Empire had made a peaceful evolution into 46 independent nations. As a nation, we in Britain were called in last year to defend the same principle of self-determination in the Falkland Islands, the support of your government and of the American people touched this so deeply and demonstrated to the world. The Falklands also caused a massive friction between Thatcher and the Queen because Thatcher did a lot of stuff kind of un unauthorised and kind of praises herself as like this the main leader of Britain, kind of the Queen got kind of sidelined in that. That our close relationship is based on shared commitment to the same values. And she said that to Reagan. What's your so which point are you well, picking out there? Well, my read on this is the principle of self-determination, first off, right? The the language that she's intentionally using. Like I think it's But then that's because that's less of a uh, oh, this happened ten years ago sorry about it and more uh this was an invasion like again i agree she kind of did the speech but this isn't the point to make for it it's it's pretty self-evident what her own beliefs are in this arena rather than like i'm saying it would it would be awesome if we had a quote woke queen who years later would be like hey here's all the atrocities of the british empire i'm gonna list them out and apologize here i'm gonna apologize for you know the anglican church's involvement in residential schools i'm gonna apologize for what we did in kenya I'm gonna apologize. you know that would be amazing but you know that never happened but in terms of the things that she did say aloud it seems that this is kind of congruent with her own worldview right like i don't i don't think she's necessarily um just because she's a figurehead she's also she wasn't uh on board with all the things that they the yeah british so wait, just just coming back to the falklands yeah um, sure what were you saying should have happened there? In Argentina, there's like wars. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit confused. It's the 80s, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that the UK had a right to basically invade and reclaim them, right? That would have been... Well, I don't think you should Argentina sorry. invaded the Falklands. Sorry, sorry. Argen yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't think he knows about the Falklands. Come on, Lance. You can't... If you're going to talk about this, don't bring up stuff that you don't know. Or admit you don't know it. Rules tier two subscription. Can you hear that? I, mean, I can get on that pop-ups. Oh, oh, okay, weird. I'm gonna turn them off for a second here. Yeah, so the Falklands, I mean, like, I mean, first of all, barely anyone lives there. And there was a referendum on the Falklands in, like, 2013. And I think, like, mm -hmm. three people voted to not be in the UK anymore. So it seems like self-determination is pretty pro-British in the Falklands. And I don't think it's, like, Crimea-style, where you've got a majority who wants to be there, but that's at the expense of a suffering ethnic minority. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, Argentina... Yeah, the, the ethnic minority being the penguins. Invaded the Falklands. It's, yeah, sorry. No. It's literally just people, sheep, and penguins. 
there's not much there. Oh, I, I didn't mean to, to get that backwards. I was talking about, um, in relation to it, was like, my understanding of the Falklands after Argentina invaded, it was widely believed in the UK to be like a pointless war, right? Like one that didn't need to persist. But then it was pointless on the part of Argentina invading, not us defending it. Um, maybe, but the problem is that you have people who, uh, are technically under the protection of the British state, and they're being invaded by Argentina, which at the time was run by a military junta, so... But weren't they going to sell it? Know. Wasn't that the thing, like, the UK was going to sell it to Argentina? Um, maybe at some point. I mean, if they were going to, that would have been pretty shit for the people living there, but, um, as far as I... Like... Yeah, why would Argentina invade if the UK was going to sell it? I'm woefully underprepared to talk about the Falklands. Was that a... Okay, you cut someone out. So yeah, this is so this is like the problem I have then. It's like there are lots of legitimate criticisms you can make about like the queen and the empire and all that shit, but I feel like in this little thing there's just like I don't really know what like Yeah, the Falklands was invaded by Argentina because a group of uh there's like fuck what were they they were like workers or some kind ended yeah, up on an up island here. just off the Falklands. Yeah, and it's then a ten week undeclared yeah, yeah. war between Argentina and the United Kingdom in nineteen eighty two over two British yeah. dependent territories in the South Atlantic. Yeah, so the British Dependent Territory uh, was the Georgia Island near the Falklands. Yeah. And that was yeah. taken, that was uh, some, a group of workers ended up there and mm -hmm. they were reported to be waving Argentinian flags and singing the anthem. And then people who lived there were thinking this might be prep for an invasion. Um, then the British send over uh, one ship, I think, to go and detain the people who were there mm -hmm. and to find out what was happening. And then Argentina launched its invasion of the Falklands. So, so it's, it says here, though, it's a protracted dispute over the territory's sovereignty. Argentina has asserted and still asserts to this day that the islands were their territory and that the government does characterize its military action as reclamation. Yeah, but this is like hundreds of years ago. This isn't like, oh, they established it. Like, like we, we put people on there like like five years before the war. It's This has not been an ongoing dispute now for a few centuries. Nation of its own territory. And then the British government characterized it as an invasion of its own territory since it had been a crown colony since 1841. Mm-hmm. So I guess related back to that original quote, let me pull that back up. The Queen addressing conflict on the Sierra Falklands. The principle of self-determination that she was said in the spirit of the British Empire made a peaceful evolution for six nations. Like the dissolvement into a peaceful evolution, I, like that's what I mean and the reason I bring that up, it's kind of related back to what I feel is kind of like historical revisionism and, and kind of the service that she's, that she's, like the role that she serves. So to, to state that the British Empire made a peaceful evolution into 46 independent nations, right? That that statement in and of itself, I think, oh, yeah, 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 it, it yeah. lends and, um, to, to the idea that this... But then... I don't know, like, that, I think that we've got to try and balance kind of like the home life, like Britain and like, now since the world, oh yeah, we're a bunch of horror people, we did really messed up stuff, um, wouldn't have played well to the public uh, in particular as well, and probably wouldn't cause civil unrest or something like that, but it would have, it would have caused tension, um, and again, that's why I think like teaching this stuff is quite important. I think just like announcing all oh, this happening, oh, we did this, that rather than like explaining it can cause issues. Was in fact a completely peaceful decolonization project that occurred um, rather than like there's tons of different instances where, yes, there, there's, you know, versions of that and then there's violent ones. Yeah, that, no, that's completely true. I just think, yeah, the Falcons is probably the worst example of it. But yeah, for everything else, yeah, yeah of course, it, it, wasn't, it kind of is. was not a peaceful transition. You know, there was like a million people detained in concentration camps uh, mm. way through like for like eight years. So, yeah. But yeah, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to defend any of that. So then that still, just, that still like, doesn't the, rise the to the level of, you know, why some people might celebrate her death. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, it's just like, what, what do you gain from it? I just don't. Yeah, it's more like, again, celebrating the deaths of like, the politician that overlooked it rather than her but again she's the figurehead so it makes sense it's just obviously in the uk optically it's quite bad other people abroad and my opinion like fair game don't know where the because i feel like it's it doesn't seem like a particularly brave move for an online leftist um mm -hmm. it feels like the brave thing is actually not to celebrate her death at the moment but um yeah I, I like okay I'll give, you, I'll give you an example of where sure. i stand with this and the way people look like in public and shit like mm -hmm. um did you ever watch corbyn much in 2017 when he with his, his like the election where he broke the conservative majority oh this might be getting to my point earlier uh like his speeches i i, I listened to that you, are you talking about uh, a specific did you one see the paxman interview uh no i haven't so oh, Paxman, who's you know, famous for being the bulldozer of the British yeah. media for interviewing people, he got fucking annihilated. And one of the ways that happened was that he asked Corbyn about 
uh, his views on the monarchy, because Corbyn said a lot of bad shit about the monarchy. He might, mm. I think he might have called them parasites at one point. So, okay. um, Pac, he's not wrong. Someone basically says, like, your manifesto, why are you not mentioning anything about abolishing the monarchy? You hate the monarchy. Why are you not doing it? And then this is supposed to be like, if you're British and you want to win an election, this is like one of the worst things that can happen to you, right? Mm. And Corbyn just I, kind of, again, like, I think mean, that's why, like, you don't want to pull people over to, like, to the Green Party and Labour and be really anti what? Because you want to pull in those people that are like undecided. And that's not one way to do it in uh, Britain. Back and says, yeah, um, it's not in the manifesto because we're not going to abolish the monarchy. Um, you know, I had a really nice chat with the Queen. We spoke about making jam uh, because they both make jam. <laughs> and I'm like, and the, the whole criticism just flattened. It just crumbled like a, fell like a sack of potatoes. Can you imagine, on the other hand, if Corbyn had answered that question with, fuck yes, we're going to abolish the fucking monarchy. They genocided the fucking Kenyans. They put the, she, or, she ordered the fucking troops to kill the people in Yemen. She, like, colonized the Falkland. Like, no, like, that would, that would, that would have, like, tanked the, the entire, yeah. world. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, um, so it's, I, it's, I, it's, I think this is where the kind of the issue is that's happening in this debate is obviously got uh, a Canadian who's obviously, like, lineage has experienced these atrocities firsthand and the political landscape is much different. So he's like, why can I, like, to be fair, Lance has got every right to, and I think I like, should go for it, fair enough. But then you got Lonely Box where it's like, well, we've got all, like, back home, it doesn't play well, that's why I'm not. So there is things to keep in mind. Oh, this is, let's pop up the top. Like, I totally get what you're saying, and I, I agree to a certain extent. I think uh, politicians, especially, they have to be very effective communicators, especially if they are on the left, because like, yeah, just getting out there and being like, a cab, guilty, and the rich, fucking edgy shit. Look at me, bro. Uh, is not going to get votes or hearts and minds. It's not going to win people over. So I, I completely agree with your point there. I don't know if broadly speaking that applies to like, say, uh, a bunch of people in Twitter who are part of one like marginalized community or another. Or oh no, I agree. Yeah, Twitter. It's a housecape anyway. Or people who are, you know, uh, like indigenous communities on Twitter. Like, I, I don't really see a problem in them celebrating uh, the death of a monarch. Um, uh, you know, a, a, a relic of the old colonial rule over their lands. I, I don't see that as a problem. I don't think that's optically yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, so, like, but we're talking about, like, political mouth. People like you and me, right? Or people like this guy on Twitter who said she ordered the troops to fucking uh, violently suppress. Like that kind of shit, right? Yeah, yeah. that's wrong. Uh, I, I agree. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's, that's, there's no reason to be a historical in the other direction. You're right. Um, I, I would totally agree with you there. For pundits, yes, uh, to an extent. I mean, sometimes I think we take ourselves too seriously. We're like, we're, um, we're not politicians. We're, we're not the vanguard. We're not, uh, we're entertainers on the internet. I think that's something else, like, people don't really seem to understand. This is when I got my latest video, actually, where it's like, you take yourself really seriously. Oh, Look happened all that. Some of the comments were quite funny, admittedly. Well, I found quite, I found them quite funny, but it's like at the moment I'm like a, a sixty subscribed channel. I'm doing this because I like it, and I would like to make kind of eventually pull people over and kind of. That's my point. Well, more like educate people. Obviously, at the moment it's it's a mix because uh, my time's difficult to manage. But what I think if it ever gets off the ground, I want to do more like political mess messaging and political advocacy but like what Bosch is doing at the moment um but also like again when i've got the free time doing like proper like essay videos and like um like kind of unpopular history topics so yeah so it's just but even though we don't take even though okay we i'm bare i'm barely a youtuber at this point um People take us more seriously than I think people think they take us. Yeah. I think people should absolutely, like, you know, watch and conduct themselves in a manner that they think is best representational of what they want to try and achieve, I guess, politically in, in this realm. Um, but, like, I, I don't know if I could do a sweeping generalization that there's not a single group that has or should have a right to celebrate this or um, enjoy the memes themselves. Like, the the the, the memes that are coming out, um, it, it's one thing to just straight up be like, you know, like, oh, fucking, that's amazing, she's dead, I can't wait to piss on her grave, blah, blah, blah. And you're like some, I don't know, white kid in San Diego who, like, mm -hmm. barely, barely... Yeah, understands this shit, right? I'll agree. That's all of them, by the way. That's like basically all of them. Right? <laughs> okay, these, that is that is that is like, cringe. I will agree you, with hey, you. <laughs> if, if fucking hey, if, if like Kenya and Jamaica and Yemen all got reparations tomorrow, they'd be less happy about that than they are about this queen dying, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'll Sorry, agree with okay. you. That that is that is one hundred percent cringe. But I think like tone policing other groups, especially groups that are marginalized and have been marginalized historically. Yeah, I'm. I'm not just leave them. Just leave them alone. Just leave everyone alone at this point. Uh, and have to deal with the ramifications generations later from uh, colonization. 
I, no, I don't agree with that personally. Yeah, I mean, if you're like, yeah, I mean, of course, if you've got like generational trauma and shit like that, like, yeah, okay, what am I going to do? Like, come on, Habibi, you know, like, no, fuck off. Like, um, but yeah, like, I'm, I don't really necessarily know how many, um, like, you know, that's, this is mostly in the part of the world, like the non-English speaking world, right? That's not really like, those aren't really like typically my colleagues. I mean, I might know one or two, but, um, but yeah, like that's, that's, that's not really the kind of point I'm going for, right? I mean, even in this thread that you've given me here. The new email. Like yeah, but I, yeah, I guess it's all like. So, yeah, the bit about Kenya. It's a thread in the comment section. No, it's not. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to uh, the surfs. And subscribe to me as well. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, there's the bit about, like, with Ghana, with her saying, like, how she um, danced with... Uh, the Ghana uh, leader to try and keep him away from the Soviet Union. Uh, he was used, and then there was a Western-backed coup, and she did nothing to support him. I mean, this guy, um, like, I don't know what this is supposed to mean that he was used, because after uh, Ghana... I have very limited history on what he's talking about now, so... ...and independence, this guy, like, basically aligned with the Soviet Union. He instated one-party rule. He uh, went... He was on his way to, like, Vietnam and China to do, like, diplomacy deals. He was given, like, a, a Lenin award or some shit, like... So... Yeah, I don't know. It just feels like there's a lot of weird authoritarian given the Lenin Award. And, uh, I think Tanki just lapped that up though. Well, they literally did. They made the whole war and the war ceremony. But not in these statements. You're saying it's mixed. I, yeah. what, what, okay, well, what about. Here's one question. What about the jewels? Yeah, the jewels should. Yeah, I mean, the jewels should go back, right? Like, And, and that okay. was actually one of. Oh, 100%. The interviews when, like, when the causal secretary was like. Things give them back. No, like why? Because they're ours. It's like it's it's not. We don't live in a world where uh, might makes right. That that world died out a while ago. Like well, especially that concept of it died out a while ago. Even the conservatives all believe it, so it's not too much of a surprise. Of the only times I think where she's actually had like any noticeable say in legislation was actually to protect. Um royal possessions from the British Museum. It was in 1963, I think that happened. There's a whole list of times where she um, where she has been consulted on bills. A lot of it's just very trivial, like laws on salmon or some shit. I have no idea what she changed in the salmon bill. <laughs> she also got... Um, I, she also got um, con uh, consulted on law school and universities. I can't remember what prime minister it was. And then she told them that their laws were like... I think it was something like a fixed curriculum or something like that and this is very vague um and they and the queen was like no that is mad that is uh, so in some regards she's had some positive uh, effects but yeah there is one the two ones that really fuck with me i really hate this like is the one relating to the british museum to protect like stolen possessions basically that's that's all it is you're protecting stolen goods um but she was, oh, sorry she was instrumental in that yeah, it looks like she actually spoke to politicians about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it. that was that was really bad because there's like there's yeah. a lot of stolen artifacts as a result of like colonization, imperialism. There's a lot of indigenous artifacts mm -hmm. in there as well. Yeah, and the other one was uh, her trying to dig into uh, like uh, requesting money from like a poverty budget uh, for like just upkeep of the palace, which yeah, I think that happens quite a lot. But I think she personally did it uh, in like 2004. So yeah. Uh, I think it's 2010. It was a Guardian article I found it in. Uh, but yeah, so there is. Box. You're, you're... That's, that's the thing. That's when she personally got involved with it. Pushing me in the opposite direction right now. Now now I'm starting to be like, hey, maybe this is a pack watch. Maybe we should be ripping out the, the dank memes. Yeah, like, memes are fine, you know? Fuck the monarchy. Like, it's really bad. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, the, yeah, I don't know. It's just... I, 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 just again, I think this disconnect here will learn the box is more like, you can do it all you want, but optically in the UK, we want to get, get rid of the Tories. It doesn't look good for us. Uh, yes. <laughs> again, this is me kind of thinking maybe this is what he's thinking maybe not but th this is the impression i've got from him celebrate like the celebrating the death unless you've got generational trauma which uh, most of us don't when it comes to this um mm -hmm. yeah then you just look like a fucking weirdo like it's and you you, you look like you don't really people they, they look like they don't care like because we haven't won anything from it you know I get where you're coming from. Still exist and, yeah. I, I get where you're coming from. The monarchy still exists. It's still there. Uh, the jewels are still in their possession. The property will still be owned by them. All that kind of stuff. All, all you're doing. Uh, yeah, not, again, not I, I think my, my sense will still, I think, yet stay the same. I think you can't tone police people who are part of those communities who are celebrating this. Um, 
but I'll, 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 I'll acquiesce that, yeah, it's kind of cringe if you're, again, a white kid in San Diego being like, I'm pissed on the queen's grave, I've hated her my whole life kind of stuff. I uh, don't police people who uh, are not, don't have generational trauma and are doing this then. <laughs> what about what about this one? I didn't know this until today, and uh, someone right. in my chat sent me an article. All the dolphins in the United Kingdom are owned by the Queen, or were owned they by are. the Queen. Uh, yeah. All of London's Regent Street, half of the UK yeah. shoreline, beats Wales. What? How, how is this owns, real? Wales, or she owns the head. Yeah, something it's, like it's, that. Yeah, it was a weird like chaotic law. Yeah, I think she owns something. chaotic like laws. A lot of them have weird common laws as well, which, funnily enough, the US stopped it. Like in some states, it's still in the common law. Some some U.S. states where trial card combat sort of thing. Swans, at least. Like yeah. I I knew of the she Tower of London. Horses. Oh God! Can you imagine how many fucking horses she owns? Well, she has six royal residences, doesn't she? Yeah. Also, fun fact: I'm always going to do this. Uh, the Tower of London is actually the first Mott and Bailey castle to exist in the uh, England. So, just in fact. Yeah. Like, and 150,000 works of art. 150,000. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like take over Buckingham Palace, either turn it turn it into a mass of Greggs or nice Waterstones. Anyone like non uh, non British Waterstones is basically our version of Barnes and Nobles. Um, but yeah, turn it into Greggs, make a lot of money out of it. That and selling all the art probably make even more money now on making out the royal family. That's the thing. If you remove the royal family, you can still do all the tours, get all the revenue from them that you wouldn't regardless. So, but in actuality, the monarchy you ever got, they will, they would probably still retain their money in terms of what they've got now. They probably just won't get any off the taxpayers. I think that's probably like in a civil society and not like a revolution society. I think that's probably what's happened. And I think I'll obviously different. I'll be like. That would probably be acceptable. I would, you would you keep your money, but if you run out, that's your own fault. Like you, you have to make it your own kind of revenue stream. That's I know that's either should be uh, public. Do Airbnb and Buckingham Palace. Public money or public uh, like sources of public revenue, which they're not really as the monarch. It's like a really bad exchange. Um, yeah, or should yeah we lose about a hundred million a year. Probably belong to whatever country they were taken from. Yeah. So I, I guess like since the the monarchy is not looking to be abolished anytime soon, maybe people are just taking a crumb of something like whatever they can get. Like hey, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, she's, she's not here it's anymore. Like, it's not even a, it's not even a crumb. It's like a fake crumb, you know. A fake crumb. Yeah, it's a fake crumb. I'm not good with uh, coming up with analogies on the spot. Metaphors, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's just like the amount of fucking disinformation I've seen about this colonial shit is like oh god. But yeah, I don't know. That's, okay. I guess that's just inevitable. I should stop being so triggered by it. Well, I guess I did. Twitter thread's got like 100,000 likes, maybe, for commenting on it. Yeah. Um, but I am actually like, even though I don't think she was like, I mean, her role for the Empire and all that was like, here's a script, uh, read it, and then go and play about in a fucking treehouse in Kenya. Like, even though there were far worse people in the, uh, in the overseeing the Empire than, than that role. Um, yeah, I think if you want to, I think people want to use the death as an opportunity to talk about the Empire because she is basically the last of the Imperial. Um, yeah, I think this is kind of, as I said, this is the best chance to kind of bring up the atrocities and to, I have a fair enough, like, crap on the Queen or that, but also kind of being like, do you better teach people about these things, teach them what's happened. It's like, yeah, it's like these quite important things monarchs right like the empire is not a thing anymore really um yeah i think that's like a good thing and you know we just spent the last the beginning of the stream going over the kenyan gulags which were pretty fucking rough um yeah so and was, i i failed to believe uh, she was completely unaware of them i think this is something what well, my box said there's some i want to do as well like going over like kind of obscure history that people don't really know about like that that is that is uh something that i do want to do maybe yeah like i just i, don't, I, can't, I don't can't know like I, it's speculation I sure what, but i can't believe that that, 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 imagine that seems like giving her way too much credit uh, well, well, even here's know, later. It's, it's it's like we 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 know about the Bengal famine. That's not because I lived through it or anything like that, but because there's enough information. You know, I've known I've known people that like where they live is where like the famine happened and all people dying, and it's like yeah, it's just not. And they were like, oh yeah, I taught about it in school. And it's like I wasn't. And it's like at university. Like, I I didn't know about this till I was at university. And publicly about it that you know this was you know under the administration of Churchill something that he actually intentionally inflicted. Yeah, but negligently more than intentionally. But yeah, um, same thing. Okay, I'm not going to split hairs over that. So like, he he didn't do it or didn't do it intent. Kind of did. He just he knew. 
basically it's going to be a horrible outcome for them, but not for white people. So like, screw it. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but like that's my point. Like, is that like I, I know about that? I didn't live through that. Okay. Well, the average uh, British right winger and probably like monarch leaning person thinks the Bengal hap the famine happened because there were cyclones. That's why they th it, it, it wasn't because of cyclones, but that's why they think that happened. And they actually also have like a million quotes from Churchill near the end of the famine where he's begging like uh, other countries to help because it went publicly. Um, but yeah, so that's, I mean, oh, so you're saying that you you think her beliefs sort of aligned with that, where she's she people, had, everything is justified. The residential school systems in Canada, the Bengal famine, all those kind of atrocities. She would have been like it was for the glory people, of the empire. I think most people, let alone the monarch, are like blissfully shell. Yeah, I agree with. I don't know about the Bart Lancer's comments, but yeah. And unaware of these things, yeah. Which but doesn't that's, excuse but it. That, but yeah, that's, that's, that's not a defense of it then. I mean, if her just, if she, in her mind, she's like, oh, this was all justified for the glory of the Empire, that makes her worse. It does, but we don't have her mindset. It's what we're thinking she should have done, probably never would have even occurred to her. So there is that. I think there's a worry of falling into kind of the like, oh, in my fantasy, this is what would happen. But in reality, it, that was not a factor at all. That was none. Like this was not an outcome that could have been factored whatsoever. No, not not justified for the glory of the empire. It's more just like you know, with every atrocity there is, with every like genocide or every war, or every ethnic cleansing, there's like some very carefully cherry picked selection of facts to make it look like it was either an accident or it was like like a lot like it's gonna be kind of compared well and no, it can be directly compared really to the US involvement in the slave trade. Like how the South completely whitewashes slavery. It's kinda of like it's kinda of like that. It is that in the UK with the atrocities that we've committed. It's almost identical. I like, the only difference is is like in our education for the most part, um we're more push uh, where everyone's like more pushing to we should be teaching about these things we shouldn't leave them leaving them out they're quite essential so there is that necessary or it was someone else's fault like yeah people like for everything they've got this for churchill everything churchill did they've got this everything the empire did they've got this that's what the operation legacy was about you know um so again i would expect the queen with her you know she was a functional person she was intelligent she was like she could she could remember her speeches. Apparently, people who met her said she was quite witty and all that. So it's not like she was missing screws. She mm -hmm. probably should have known better. But like, yeah, if that's the hurdle she didn't cross, if she didn't become the first monarch in 300 years to break the script and cause a constitutional monarchy, like, yeah, she would have been one in a million if she did that. But she didn't, alas. So that's also why um, I, th I think that fosters I think the morning is like really dumb. <laughs> yeah. But that, okay, yeah, I, I know you're not, no fan of the morning, but like, I, I think that fosters the com like the complicity argument then that, that I was trying to say. If, well, of if... course, she was complicit. Yeah. She was complicit, but she wasn't the one holding the gun. She was just the one waving at everyone when everyone in the background got shot. It's it's bad, but it's not as bad. Yeah. Well, then the justification or people celebrating her death if she was complicit in all these horrifying acts, I don't think is an inappropriate measure. Um, no, I mean, because at that point, like if you're if you're going to make that many people complicit, then like that's that's so many people. I mean, you could say um. I mean, you could look look at any of us and like link people back. The amount of civil servants that would be complicit it would be, oh, I wouldn't imagine that number. Kind of a draw, like people, someone who voted Labour before the Iraq War, right? Are they complicit? Um, oh, so the degree of complicity is you're saying the scale. I, I would yeah. I would posit if if that's if that's what you're putting forth that hers is much higher than just the average voter. It's yeah, because queen. I know she's the I know she's the head, right? Yeah. She's the head in a very like on paper, but not any practical way, right? Like. Mm -hmm. She's never affected any, she's never like vetoed anything. She's never given her, like written her own script for like a serious political issue. Um, I don't know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the psychology of someone who was basically told from the age of like one that they were born to rule and you have to do this, this and this and this and this and this and this. And this. Like, I don't know what it's like to live like that. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's really weird, I don't know. Yeah, it's probably um, very weird, but that doesn't change the end results of what you're doing, right? And how other people will judge you for it. Yeah, and yeah, she was functionally like a propagandist for very bad shit. And occasionally did pretty bad shit herself. She, I, think, I don't know if you know the rumors that it's very possible that Prince Andrew got his legal fund from her, from like public money, basically. Oh no, that's not even a rumor. That's like fact. Like the palace, like she dipped into the palace funds to pay for it. Mm. Yeah, that's possibly. really bad. Possibly. Confirmed, possibly. Yeah, um, I don't know, but yeah. But just, I guess, just, I guess, just, I guess just, we're, we're splitting hairs then when it comes down to it about whether or not you feel that's enough justified for people who do not have direct connections to any of the, the colonial ramifications of any of this to celebrate her death. Um, yeah, no, if you don't have any connections, and, and if you're a political advocate, and if you're trying to represent, well, if you're, you know, if you're on Twitter, you're speaking for someone, right? You're giving an impression to someone. Uh, yeah, it just depends on what your goal is. Do you want to, uh, like, 
I guess, have a little hug box where you make people who already agree with you feel like they're in on this little like queen death party? Or do you want to like, um, you know, live in a world where finally there are like more left wingers than right wingers? And I feel like if you want the latter, uh, the celebration gets you nothing. It just makes you look like, yeah, just. I, I don't, more, yeah, uh, I guess I'll, I'll never be able to answer that. I guess neither of us will because we don't have like, just not like data or stats we can turn to towards which one is directly impacting people. That would be interesting. Um, I, I, on the other end, also think though that like, Broadly speaking, for a healthy functional society, we should also point out the things that we find to be abhorrent, and then mm -hmm. after after the fact, condemn them. And uh, if people want to say, you know, it's a good thing that that person no longer exists because of all the bad things they were doing, and how you go about uh, that? No, yeah, you've no. I mean, like, you've got me on like the first two, condemn <laughs> all that shit. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm gonna say the same. Thing. Uh, again, I almost had to agree with. I think this part pretty agree more on thing as well. Like. Just because she's dead, right? It would make me a massive hypocrite to treat her any differently when she's dead than I would when she was alive. Like, I'm not right. going to be nice to her just because she died. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, even again, like, it's not as if she was, like, wreaking havoc through the end. We respect her because her family lost the grandmother, but the respect does not go past that. Of her life, yeah. <laughs> like, um, mm -hmm. so, yeah, I don't know. Just, yeah, celebrate. I just think celebration of death, it just, it never, it never looks good. Um, I said, you're not. Like, it's it's more again. Yeah, it's more of an optics game than anything. It's just especially for like British people. This is just an optics game. If you're celebrating, we're gonna have a snap. Someone... We're gonna have a snap election. Actually, I don't even know because bef before there was talks of a snap election, um, before this trust got in power. So there is whether it's gonna be. It might be placed by now because there's, there's, we've only got. Um, is it two years? I think it's two years or three years. But well, it's almost twenty nineteen. It's five years. Yeah, we've only got two years until another election. So it's like, is it going to make much of a difference? So there's that. Who's maybe like on the middle of a fucking rampage? Yeah, maybe. Even if she like if she died while she was giving like pro empire speeches, um, I guess another monarch would have come over and done the exact same thing. So um, mm. I don't know. Yeah, just no, not celebrating death. No. Uh, for me, it depends on the person. Like, I, I think for, for Kissinger, who I will once again reiterate is far more evil and does more damage mm -hmm. than the Queen, um, I, I will certainly be happy. With but he had, the, he had the agency to where he was doing these things. He wasn't the figurehead, he was the one concocting it. Brown. I don't wish death upon him. I think he should go to prison. But, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, this is, I mean, this has happened the other way around as well, though, right? Like, um, Jeremy Corbyn got in a lot of trouble. I love Corbyn; he's so good. Uh, he got into trouble for saying that the death of Bin Laden. Was like Corbyn, awful foreign policy takes, but his social policies and economic policies are pretty sound. It was a tragedy, right? And again, that was a kill shot in the <laughs> Paxman interview. And they're like, "Why would you say that? Why would you possibly say the death of Bin Laden? 9/11 <laughs> was a tragedy." And he's like, "Well, because he should have been captured and put on trial." Mm -hmm. I agree with him. He should have been captured and put on trial. Yeah, and I don't think that's just a... It's like, uh, optically, it's like, yeah, I like the monarchy, but Bin Laden, like, yeah. Optical thing. So I think it's actually, if you're against celebrating the, the death of fucking Bin Laden, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's the same thing. Like, the death of the Queen, I don't think it's a tragedy, but it's a it's a shame that, um, it's a shame that she never, that she had, she, she got to live the way she did so for, someone... for that long. So she someone just, do what you did for so long. Yeah. I, have, I haven't been reading your chat, but someone just sent me a message that says, Lance will have to be okay with right-wingers who find Bernie Sanders abhorrent and celebrate his death if they do celebrate his death. I mean, there's been tons of examples where, you know, they, they'll celebrate a figure who I might have, uh, you know, thought was a good person and they absolutely despise or think is wretched. Um, but when that happens, optically, is that pushing everyone away from the right would be the bigger question here, I guess, right? If, if a right-winger yeah, yeah, yeah. right is all of a sudden like fucking RIP bozo to Bernie Sanders and all these memes pop up or something because uh, he died of old age. You know, because he was killed tragically or something that would make it optically worse. Um, yeah. Would would that suddenly like convert a bunch of people? Would, would people be well, like, oh, well, the, the right is, is with... disgusting. It's one well, no, of the whole different values and people. Well, look what's been happening with Trump. Uh, now it's gone to the stage where now I think like half of Republicans have said they're willing to let Trump go. And I think a big part of that and a big problem for Trump and even people as far right as Ben Shapiro have said this is that this guy just has like all the aesthetics of everything we hate as good, honest, tr traditional, like family loving, God fearing conservatives, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that he was like uh, a massive hedonist with like 10 million porn stars under his belt and whatever the fuck else. Yeah. Epstein. Uh, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> a lot of, I think a lot of conservative people uh, maybe don't see them so. Which is where obviously the royal family uh, cross over much uh as conservative pundits but a lot of conservative people actually do value respectability quite a lot don't they 
Uh, I'd say certain factions do. I think MAGA uh, Republicans are kind of taking over the party now, um, as well as the movement. Like, I never thought you would see more than one QAnon politician. Now we have multiple. I never thought people would lean into people like Matt Gates and all these far-right fringe figures. Now more of them are popping up in primaries and stuff. Um, That's happening at the same time as a bunch of Republicans are turning on Trump, though, right? Also That's true. Also yeah, yeah, and the, and the rhinos and, and the, the yeah. fracture within the party. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, yes, there are. I, I, I totally agree with you. Old-scale Republicans who are definitely disgusted by a handful of it. Just like there are uh, corporate Democrats who are disgusted with... I agree most of the moment. I'm trying to think if it's a change. He's still, a, so. he's still a good bit. Just just under half or bang on half are ready to leave Trump mm. within the, of the Republican can you, voters. Can you, yeah. can you send me that when we're done talking? Yeah. Because that would be... I might have committed the crime of not fully reading this article, but there you go. <laughs> I, I mean, Loader box. Like, Loader box. Still like, so. He's still a good bit ahead of that. I'm actually, I'm, I'm very curious. I would, uh, that would be, in my opinion, good news. I would like to see the, the right get fully fractured into two distinct groups. Or multiple. Only that would happen in, in the UK, but it doesn't, because if one party fails, everyone just goes, just go vote for conservatives. Groups. I think it's better for, I think it's better for the left. Yeah, well, I've currently got um, $20 against Dylan on Trump, uh, Trump running for uh, third party and splitting the vote. Wait, you're, get the you, you're, you bet 20 bucks that he's going to do that? If he doesn't get the nomination. If he doesn't get the nomination, he's going to run independent. He would, he'll run independent and split the vote. That's actually, I was about to say that's ridiculous. You're about to lose 20 bucks. But now that I think about it, I can see him do that. I mean, he still thinks he won the first. The yeah, last yeah, yeah. Thing about uh, Jamaican leaders wanting Prince William and Queen Elizabeth to promise reparations. Oh, yeah. Why would they ask them to do that? This is from the new Amata. Yeah, that's what Oh, I remember when this happened, actually. I think this is it. I Enjoy the Queen. Here are the following things, right? Uh, people aren't really in uh, i would say a state to want to hear that that's probably the, the yeah best but that's not that's that. not because of the that's not because of the abject horrors of colonialism though right that's just like white well that's the, that's the that's the right. weight behind people being like why are you why are you talking about the queen not being Dick on the head. fairly like uh agreeable to you know the other side because you're exposed to them a lot more but for people like us i don't know it's like if you don't go all the way like people fucking hate you for it. i don't know i i think maybe it's just a I, I, I think maybe it's one of the that's why i like the different tankies or like situations Tanky the horrors and atrocities of both colonialism and the British Empire were so vast and well documented, and the idea of trying to introduce, well, I actually want to have a nuanced take on this and point out that, well, I do not enjoy the Queen, here are the following things, right? Uh, people aren't really in, uh, I would say, a state to want to hear that. That's probably the, the Yeah, but that's, not, that's, yeah, not because of the, that's not because of the abject horrors of colonialism, though, right? That's just like white Well, that's the, that's, the, that's the weight behind people being like, why are, you, why are you talking about the Queen not being as bad as she is? And you're like, well, she's representational of really bad things, but in other ways she's not. And they're like, well, this is, you know, there's some documented things that she's also done. Like, I, I can see why people would get really mad at that. Especially if they do think she was firing on protesters or like stealing the Falklands or whatever the fuck. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Okay. But but like the list of stuff we went like I don't know how long we've been talking, but the list of stuff yeah, we went through it's yeah. still bad. It's still really bad. It's it's still. But like, then, look at the prime ministers who were actually doing those and the governors. It's. I I can't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't don't like crap on the queen, but at the same time, in the line of like the of like responsibility she's further down the list than these people a lot of it is unforgivable in my in my opinion and even if it's like she was she was you know blissfully unaware or she was completely aware but at the same time she thought it was justified for x reason like that still doesn't make her a good person by any measure it makes her you know a pretty fucking bad person in my assessment um not as bad as, as someone like kissinger who actually like you know directly ordered bombing campaigns with different areas so that's why i'm saying distinctly different things are different different people are bad for bad reasons but that doesn't make her good yeah, that's why, like, I feel like if you're going to go into these things, like, you would want to go in with the things that, like, she actually did with her own volition, and, oh, God, yeah, uh, like, I, unfortunately, I think a lot of that is domestic. The stuff that she had, like, a big say in was domestic stuff, right? Yeah. As far as colonialism goes, like, Britain was an empire when the Queen came into power, and then yeah. by the end of it, they weren't, you know? Like, the Great, but she was, was but she, but she was also but... amassing vast amounts of wealth from them as well. So that's, like, being a prophet or a profiteer of colonialism is also very bad. Yeah, obviously, I mean, all, yeah. like, all that kind of bling and all that was there, like from the beginning right like um or when she came in but um yeah, yeah but you, you like, can you can be the one that breaks the chains haven't, haven't you seen game of thrones she could have been the one that breaks the chains i know alas maybe uh, maybe charles will do it you know he's climate conscious <laughs> <laughs> that's a start is that a thing I, I, I thought that was a meme um no i think fuck wait i think he might fund he's also weirdly for cultural diversity like he actually spoke out against the rwanda flights which is quite shocking like he was like this is horrible stop it 
No, he definitely funds some kind of climate change action, and he kind of goes out of his way to talk about it. But um, yeah, he's yeah he's full on his last speech about the doomsday clock of climate change, and yeah, yeah he's he's been kind of labeled as the outspoken prince. And mm. um, there's already a Reuters article here about how he's probably going to have to bite his tongue if he becomes king. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't. I think it'll be interesting. I think my chat is lighting me up for not saying break the wheel. Sorry, break the wheel, not the change. Oh yeah, break the wheel. Either way. Yeah, well. My, my point was. I feel like if you're if you're if you're a royal and you're looking out at the public, you know, I feel like the people who are going to convince you to break the wheel are the ones who don't celebrate your mother's death. But yeah. <laughs> that's uh, as you British people say, cheeky, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thanks for the uh, talk, Lunar Box. I, I do enjoy um, your your voice and conversation. Yeah, I had fun. I'll probably speak to you soon, all right? I hope so. All right, thank you, man. Bye bye. Yep. And there we have ended. So that was quite an interesting debate. I definitely the idea that she didn't kind of speak out these things about these atrocities is quite an interesting one because we don't know the consequences, and I don't think we actually have the ability to comprehend what these consequences like would have been for her, whether it be sensitive or not, whether it be personal game it is. It's interesting. But, kind of spent from a British person, I'm not kind of overly going for the memes, like, kind of like, uh, think Karachi's dead kind of thing, because again, optically, it's not, it's not good. I said many times throughout this video, we are the antithesis of actually getting out, ourselves out of a Tory rule, which we've been over the last 12 years has crippled us. Just basically laughing at the royal family saying how the Queen's dead, it's just going to push people away in the opposite direction that we want them to go in. We want we want the Labour votes, even though obviously Labour's got its problems. But it's it's like again, like in the US, like we should rather want to be ruled by a Republican or a Democrat, a Democrat, and Labour. I'll vote for Labour in this country. Like my bets on next election is probably going to be a Lib, Lib Dem Labour coalition. So yeah, I think I'm going to end on that. So yeah, don't be cringe. Remember, if you are a streamer or something out there, optic, optics is important no matter what someone says to you. It's always important to think about how your message comes across to people and how it may be interpreted. No, a lot of people don't care. A lot of people have voiced themselves recently saying, not my job to do it, but I would like to think it almost is my job to kind of persuade people and give people different arguments and perspective of things. So I'm not, I, might, I may not be able to change anyone's mind, but... Maybe have them understand something differently. That's kind of what my goal is with this channel and kind of why I started it. So, yeah. So, I was. It's now coming to awesome plus winter. Expect a lot of these nice big jumpers. So, yeah. I was. This is the worst stream. Peace. See ya.